Thanks for joining in today. I promised one of my viewers that before concluding this season on male reproductive organs, I'm going to talk about testicular cancer. So today, that is our topic. Although it's not one of the commonest cancers in men, however, the important thing about this cancer is that it affects much younger men from the ages of 15 and 49. This cancer has a very good prognosis and vast majority of men, if the cancer is picked up early enough, then they will be cured of the condition. Testicular cancers can be divided into two varieties. One are called germ cell tumors or germ cell cancers. They are the commonest variety and they account for over 95% of all testicular cancers. These cancers respond very well to chemotherapy. The second variety are non-germ cell tumors and these are rare tumors. Germ cell tumors are again divided into seminomas and non-seminomas. Seminomas account for 40 to 45 percent of all testicular cancers and non-seminomas account for the rest. Non-seminomas include teratomas, embryonal cancer, choriocarcinoma and yolk cell tumors. Non-germ cell tumors include Leydig cell tumors which account for 1 to 3 percent of the cancers and certainly cell tumors, which account for only 1% of all testicular cancers. So we are going to focus our discussion on germ cell tumors or germ cell cancers because they are the commonest type of cancers. Testicular cancer accounts for 1% of all cancers in men, hence it is a rare cancer. But if you look at the age in which this develops, which is, which is between the ages of 15 and 49, which is much younger age as compared to common types of cancers in men like prostate cancer, bowel cancer, lung cancer, etc. In this age group, this becomes one of the most commonest cancers that affects men. Conditions that increase the risk of developing testicular cancer include the commonest thing would be undescended testicle in which the testicles do not come into the scrotum after birth within the first year of the boy's life and which I have discussed in my video above. So do please watch it. This increases the risk of developing testicular cancer by three times. Family history of testicular cancer and by family history like somebody had their father developed testicular cancer, they are at a four to five times higher risk of developing testicular cancer. If someone's brother had developed testicular cancer, they are about eight to ten times at a higher risk of developing testicular cancer. Previous testicular cancer, if someone has developed testicular cancer on one side, then they are at a much higher risk of developing testicular cancer on the opposite side in the future. Hence, it is very important for these patients to examine themselves regularly and to be under regular follow-up for an extended period of time. I have added this little thing which is called performance enhancing drugs like steroids, EPOs, etc. which are used in high performance sports like cycling, weight training, etc. Jury is still out whether these drugs increase the risk of testicular cancer or not because these cancers happen at a younger age when the hormones are quite high in men. Hence, it is likely that drugs which are high in steroid hormones like testosterone or other hormones, anabolic hormones, may increase the risk of developing testicular cancer. Some of the athletes that spring in my mind is the famous American cyclist Lance Armstrong. He developed testicular cancer at a very young age which went to his brain as well and requires surgery and treatment. How is testicular cancer diagnosed? First of all, the patient will feed a lump on one side of the scrotum in only one testicle. Testicular cancer does not happen on both testicles at the same time. The testicle on that side will feel hard and irregular. There may be ache in the scrotum and there might be fluid collection around the testicle on that side called hydrocele, for which you can watch my previous videos. 
Next thing the patient will do is go to the doctor who will examine the patient and confirm the findings. The doctor will refer the patient for some blood tests and scans. Scans include ultrasound scan of the scrotum, which will diagnose the presence of testicular cancer. Other scans like CT and MRI are also used to diagnose the spread of testicular cancer, which we will discuss in a minute. Blood tests for hormones which many testicular cancers produce, like alpha fetoprotein or human chorionic gonadotrophin, if they are very raised in the blood, then they also point towards the diagnosis of testicular cancer. Having normal blood tests for these hormones does not mean that the patient hasn't got testicular cancer because some testicular cancers do not produce these hormones. Which organs do testicular cancer spread to? The commonest place for testicular cancer to spread to are lymph glands. They can be either locally around the testicle in the pelvis or they can be in the abdomen, around the lungs or in our neck or above the collarbone. After the lymph glands, it can spread to the liver, to the lungs, to the bones and the brain. And hence, whenever the testicular cancer is diagnosed, patient is put through a series of CT scans or MRI scans to check that cancer has not spread elsewhere in the body before treatment is started. Treatment of testicular cancer depends on the stage of the cancer. So how early or how advanced the cancer is, or the cancer is limited to the scrotum or it has spread to other parts of the body. Every patient will require the affected testicle to be removed. And after that, surgery may be required to remove the lymph glands. Surgery may also be required to remove the cancer from the lungs, sometimes from the liver, and occasionally also from the brain. Not every patient is suitable for these operations. When the cancer has spread to other parts of the body, like the lymph glands, lungs, liver, brain, etc., then chemotherapy will also be required. Radiotherapy for spread to the lymph glands may also be necessary in some of these patients. With early diagnosis and the combination of these treatments, the outcome of testicular cancer is very good. 99% of the patients are alive at one year and over 95% patients are alive at five years. A close follow-up is very important and it is very important that the patients should examine their other side on a regular basis. I hope you found this video informative. Please remember to like and subscribe and I shall see you in the new season starting next week with female reproductive organs. Until next time, take care.